Why have you come to me about your thing on Aguinaldo and Bonifacio? Because that, there's so much uh, speculation about, about, this, about what happened in the Eros. I wish that Filipino historians will not just you know, look at documents or records, but look, look into the personality of these people. <coughs> I, I do not think it was a question of, of bureaucracy and someone with charismatic uh, uh, leadership, you know. I think it was a question of Iabang. Both men were Iabang, you know. And it's, it's really what broke up the revolution of 1896. It's what broke up the Bukbalahap uprising, it's what broke up the NPA thing, you know, the, the Yabang of these leaders, the ego, ego, yeah. I hope historians would, uh, like Nick McKean, look more at the personalities of uh, these, these characters. Read, read my piece and give it a chance. Mm? Just, you just give it a chance. See, yeah. it, see uh, I, I'm not discounting uh, what you say. Uh, Frank, so for those of you who don't know, uh, Around the 1980s, I asked the four surviving leaders of the Mukbalahap Uprising, you know, Luis Taruk, who is Kapampangan, Fred Saulo, who is Tagalog, Castro Alejandrino, who is Kapampangan, and Dr. Lava, who is, you know, who is uh, Tagalog. Because I thought that the reason the movement really was, I don't think it was a really uh, broken by Magsaysay no. with assistance from the uh, Americans, you know. Although he helped. So we had the seminar in the bookshop. Both of these, all of these men were in prison for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I thought that the reason that the, the uh, book broke up is because of the uh, difference between, differences between the, the hook leadership, well, which was uh, urban, and, mm -hmm. and the soldiers, the military as, you know, leadership, like with its setup, which is. Uh, rural, or is it the Kapampangan and mm -hmm. Tagalog rivalry? Because these ethnic differences are, are very real. Mm -hmm. Then, then when they met for the first time, you know, they were very civil to each other. Then after lunch, they started, you know, quarreling with each other. <laughs> and, no, and this is all on tape. This is all on tape, oh, and great. it was published. You know. Oh, you so, published it in yes. yes. So I looked closely, and you know, I looked closely at the. I was listening, you know. Well, they were arguing and almost shouting at one another. It was ego. Mm -hmm. What were they arguing about? Oh, ideology and tactics, you know. And mm -hmm. I know a little bit about, you know, communist ideology. Mm -hmm. They were arguing what went wrong, you know. And they were using uh, uh, dialectics and ideology and tactics as, as a veneer of their egos. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and look at our political parties. How, why do they break up? You know? Ego. Is it? Is it? But some of it is only all male activity. Some of it isn't. Do you think there's something? There's a gender dimension, though. To no, it's, some... uh, it's it's the Filipino makeup, Claire. You know, Filipinos are yabang. It's it's that simple. <laughs> Both all. Look. San Francisco, and I kept saying this, San Francisco has about 400 Filipino organizations. <laughs> no one wants to be a follower. Everyone wants to be a leader. <laughs> yeah. And my hometown, Rosales, I don't think there are more than 1,000 immigrants from my hometown. And there are two Rosales organizations in San Francisco. You know? And they invited me and they said, hey, why don't you know, it's more than one. No, they have no answer. Uh -huh. So, and you think it's un uniquely Filipino? Pardon? You think it's uniquely yes. Filipino? Yes. Because of the ethnic linguistic no. differences yeah. as well? The, the, there is a because. Filipino who works as interpreter, you know, in cases where the Filipinos are inadequate in English. Mm -hmm. and the judge, you know, sort of lectured to him and said, why do you Filipinos snitch on one another? <laughs> The Japanese do not, the Koreans do not, the, you know, the Vietnamese do not, but you Filipinos snitch on one another. Mm -hmm. So, how else?
But are you sure the Vietnamese don't? <laughs> I mean, they, they, they must be much, they may be much I mean, cleverer be about it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so I, I hope that historians will look more into the, like Big Joaquin did, you know, in his question of heroes, into the personalities of these people, you know, not just on documents. And, you know. You know, when, when I interviewed Aguinaldo in the 50s, I asked him point blank, you know, I said, uh, people say that you ordered the killing of uh, uh, Bonifacio. Mm. And, and this was his reply, you know, when you have a revolution, you cannot have two leaders. Mm -hmm. That's all. Well, that's what I was saying, wasn't it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, but that's what he said. Yeah. yeah that's what he said. Well, he... he yeah. Did you ever did, did you ever get that on tape? No, no, no. But I wrote about it. Yeah. And you talked about land. It's, it's crucial to us, you know. But the really important <coughs> event about land is when the Americans uh, uh, imposed the Torrens title system here, mm -hmm. because that that started in massive land grabbing by. Illustrados by the mestizos, you know. yeah. Yeah. Up to the present, I don't think they even pay taxes. Yeah, yeah. You, you know the the. Sorry. the, the, yeah. the, <laughs> no, the uh, did, you, did you ever meet uh, Wolf Radijinsky? Yes. Oh, you knew him. Uh huh. Okay, I, I also knew him very well. Yeah. Wolf Radijinsky, for those who don't know, yeah, he, he did land reform in the Philippines, uh, Taiwan, Japan. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was, the he was uh, yeah, he was, you know, in effect part of the counterinsurgency teams that was said. He was, the, but he was a land reform specialist. This uh, is, yeah, this is Kosev, but he was the boyfriend of Mita Pardo de Tabera. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> you, you know what he said? There was no land reform in the Philippines because Marcos was in the best of terms with so many of your landlords. <laughs> so there you are. Yeah. Do we, do we, any any um, questions, comments, whatever? Castle, please. Yeah, could you say your name? Maybe you know each other. Oh, you you don't know German? I don't. Miss <laughs> International. <laughs> I'm Shows what I know. You know, do I look like I'm someone who knows Miss International? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Rizal's great grand niece. Yes. Wow. Okay. So. Woman of Columbus. So the, the uh, ah, I see. So, okay. Uh, um, all right. You you are a very good scholar, very good researcher, historian. No doubt about that. And so is. Uh, oh, I know historian. Uh, the national artist, Johnny Nose. Many of the things I say is But I think, for our purposes, you're treading on dangerous waters. Oh, that's me. No, but uh, it's because we need our heroes. You do. But then, if we start, you know, like uh, uncovering their clay feet, we will be left with no one but. Mm -hmm. Nardo Putik and Achyong Salonga. Mm. But, but I remember what Belton Breck said, I pity the nation that needs heroes. But you, mm. you pass through a stage when I think you need heroes. They could be female, you know. Later on, when we, yes, later on when we become a more mature nation, mm -hmm. then we can demolish other statues. Well, but I, I, I think we still need them. I have, you know, India, India, and the Philippines have two such shining heroes that can't be corrupted. Rizal and Gandhi. I mean, to me, as a Westerner, this is totally amazing. Mm -hmm. Do we do we want to go to Rizal? Because I mean, Rizal. Um, I mean, is the acknowledged hero of, of uh, the Philippines. He's not a perfect person, you know. He is. Yes, that. I don't know that I would agree that one needs heroes um, in the sense that they haven't done much work on Sumoroi and the Kokoi. And 
I think personally, yeah, these yeah. were very brave men. Mm -hmm. I don't know about, I mean, I know enough about Bonifacio and about Rizal, and they're fine, I mean, but um, I think all of them had feet of clay, no doubt. And if you read um, Nicotine's The Question of Hero, it's, uh, I came out with the conclusion that we had no heroes mm -hmm. because he had not said anything about Sumoroy and the book. By the way, one of my heroes is Nick Joaquin. I know that's a, that's true. I mean, it, 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 it's true. He's 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 the greatest genius. I, but we frankly would agree with this, right? After me, of course. After. Me. <laughs> off the record, off the record, he would concede. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sorry, can I just take this off in a possibly parallel? Sorry, John, my my position. I've been around for about forty years, and. As we've been having this discussion, this conversation, an idea has been going through my mind about uh, drawing comparison in what happens within the family. And if you look at teenagers, um, uh, I, I have to have two teenage girls in my family at home. Um, teenagers throughout the world adore their heroes. They look up to their pop heroes. And they, they, they look to other people who appear to have a greater confidence and certainty about the world. And, and it helps to support their own um, uncertainties in their development. Now, as for those, those people grow up, as those teenagers grow up and become more confident individuals in themselves, as they grow, grow up and they're encouraged to, to become critically aware of their own abilities and their own, uh, their, their own views on life, they, they set those heroes aside. And I, I think it's, it's a fate. Somebody said the Philippines is a very new country, which it is. I mean, half a century is, is, is quite a short time. Um, if you compare it to something like Britain, Britain has been a very, very stable um, democracy for hundreds of years. Um, as you move out of that stage of having heroes, you develop and you acquire a greater self-confidence, which allows everybody to, be, to engage in a different type of conversation with each other, where the whole of the policy starts to depend upon mature contributions to it by a large group of people rather than certain individual heroes which, in, which entail a lot of followers. <coughs> so that, that's just being a throw mind to be listening. It's not thought through at all, but I'm just throwing it into the discussion. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah, thanks, Sean. So, any other thoughts, comments? Cynthia, is really? Well, it seems to me when you uh, mentioned this thing about uh, Yaban in our in our collective psyche, you know, I think it, that's why we, we're still searching for our identity as a people. We've always had this thing: who are we really are as a people? Because we we're so fra fragmented. <coughs> we're so there's, we're very regionalistic. I mean, the Ilocanos against the the Cebuanos or whatever. Even as you said, the Pampangos and the Tagalogs. In, between even the communist movement. So there's, and I don't know why it is that way, and what's, going, what's it going to take for us to set these differences aside? Because even up to today, you see it in our political arena. Mm. I mean, every time uh, there's a conflict between parties or between the leaders of those parties, the one who loses sets up a, sets up a new party. I mean, you know. I don't know what it is, because we're not politically immature still, or I don't know, but it all, in all walks of life, <coughs> it's happening, so <laughs> what's it going to take? I remember going, uh, um, uh, following up your point, I, I was at a conference in Washington, D.C., maybe it was 2005 or so, included mostly uh, political scientists. I was a token historian, and it was all about, it, um, well, I forget what the conference was supposed to be about. It was turned out to be, what's wrong with the Philippines? And, uh, and, it was, and it was all the political scientists were the ones who were, who were talking about this. I was listening for a while, and I said, you know what, I mean, give the Philippines a break, for God's sake. I mean, come on now. I mean, it's not, it's not perfect, but there are some positives, uh, I mean, big ones. And, you know, if you look at the U.S., was it how many years after independence? 46? Token independence, right? 46 to... Uh, the 14, okay. Uh, so you look at the, the U.S. between 17 and 70 in the same amount of time, and we had a civil war, right? That's what we need. 
<laughs> but I, I think, but I, I think there's a, there is a tendency to be um, extremely self-critical. I mean, a, every new nation state has had big time problems. I mean, how many move right away to uh, um, being tops in this and, and, and tops in that? And there, are, it does seem to me they're uh, call me Pollyannish, but I do. Uh, I would say I do see positive signs, um, and it, it, there's some infrastructure that's infrastructural work that's going on. It's long overdue. It's not Taiwan, but it's it's is important. Education system is 12 years now, thanks to DJ. But, you know, there, there are things we all can do. But but Glenn, you know. It's all the fault of American colonialism. <laughs> because well, I agree with you in some. Uh, no, no, no. Because it would have been better if we were occupied by the Japanese. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. The British. No, no, no. The, because uh, the British. You mean, but they we were occupied by the Japanese, Frankie. Yeah, but only for the time. No, no. You, you mean for seventy years? Yeah. There are, there are no games in history. Uh, yeah. But, but there's Korea and there's, and there's Taiwan. These yeah. are two different places. The yeah, Japanese but, are in both but, but places. Anyway, if the Japanese occupied us, we would have been so bitterly opposed to them. Yeah. See, but they would have abolished the oligarchy. Okay? And we will not have a love-hate relationship the way we have with you. Well. With the Japanese, it would be <coughs> complete hate. Well, there would be, yeah. but, but no, but no, no. no. I, I, want, I want Korea, I want Korea grow. I was there shortly after, after the war. Huh? Yeah. And you know what all the Koreans were telling me? We'll beat Japan, we'll beat Japan. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was their major rallying cry. The Taiwanese didn't say the same thing. There's some, there's, no, there's, because the Taiwanese were treated well by the... By the the, but the Japanese, Japanese yeah. the Japanese. My father-in-law, who's in Taiwan t t today, oh. to just um, a, a short story. Okay, um, he was middle-level manager for a multinational. Did I tell you this one before? Yeah. Um, and he, they were taken over by a Japanese firm. The managers went to meet the the, the, the Japanese uh, leaders. They went down the line, and, and uh, the big boss came down the line, shook hands with all of them, looked at my father-in-law's face, and tears fell down his, his face, and he embraced them. He grew up, he was, they grew up, they went to the same school. They went to the, the same school. So my father-in-law got a big promotion, you know. <laughs> the Japanese know how to do that. Yeah. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a different experience. It, it, I, I find it... You know, quite astounding. The same country has different track records in different places. Go yeah. figure. Frankie, I, I enjoy reading counterfactual history, mm. but mainly as entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Mm. Um, history is calm. Mm. 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 History is calm to us for our, um, to, to stimulate our thinking. For in a certain sense, tolerance. Tolerance, uh, diversity. 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 Mm -hmm. Pointed to different voices. voices. Yeah. yeah. Uh, often new voices. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think we need to do more research. Uh, I was working with uh, Father De La Costa, with my classmate here. He was writing history of the Philippines, and he found out that he could not write history of the Philippines because he had to. 
gather together, the bibliography first, and to put together a bibliography of the Philippines. There was none. <laughs> and, and so he had to go back to the basic thing and this. And so perhaps we are still uh, at very early stages of writing our history. That, yeah, that, I, I would second that to, to, to some extent. Uh, doesn't mean one, one can't do it. But w one reason, uh, uh, remember I, in uh, working on Philippine uh, land, uh, I said I was going to write a general history. Um, it, I, I stopped writing a general history because I didn't think enough had been done. Uh, sometimes you just, uh, and uh, of course who knows when, w at what point one reaches it. But other people obviously feel differently because we do a Philippine history is kind of coming, coming out. So we, we can't stop some people from writing them. And, uh, and who knows? Well, I'm never going to do it. I know that for sure. Great. Yeah. But um, I just want to make another comment on this thing about Philippines. Um, as Glenn knows, uh, uh, company, you know, I, I wrote a book about the history of a Philippine American uh, who didn't want to be a hero, but he became probably the premier Philippine American hero, uh, Philip Veracruz. And Philip is famous for saying, we need the truth more than we need heroes. But for me, what that really ends up meaning is our heroes become more complete. For me, they're more satisfying. They're really <coughs> greater heroes if we understand the truth about them more. And that's what I appreciate so much about what Glenn does, because he opens, you know, I used to be, I was just in love with Renato Constantino at one stage in my life, and I got to know Renato fairly well. Um, but I think Glenn, you know, he opens these heroes up. He makes them more real people, but even they're greater people for that. Yes? I just want to make a comment. If you go to Malapena, there's a hall of heroes. Okay, that says it all about our countries. And we have history, because apparently somebody told me that in Madrid, there's a university there, and there's one room in that university which carries books on the history of the, of the, the islands of the Philippines. So we have, we have history. We're an old people. Okay, and the other thing is, for the Filipinos, for us to understand ourselves, it's probably best to uh, look ourselves to the lenses of a British journalist who said, Philippines, 360 years, 300 odd years in the Spanish convent, and 60 years in Hollywood. My mother said that. My mother said that. <laughs> <laughs> I read in a book in the 70s. Okay? And I've lived in Europe, and I've lived in America, and we read in Amalgam, you know, right smack in the Pacific Ocean. So we're really unique. And we don't have to, to apologize for ourselves. Right? Or should we also, we should not also deny our history, our past, our, our colonial past. This, uh, this experience actually enrich, enrich, enrich us. Mm -hmm. okay? and, and the people. That is why everywhere you know, in the world, mm -hmm. the Filipino thrives. It doesn't thrive here, but uh, everywhere else they, they do. And yeah. that is true. Who said this? That in San Francisco you have like 400 Philippine uh, associations. In Europe it's the same thing. You know, in Switzerland, I mean, they, nobody wants to be a follower. If if he doesn't, if somebody doesn't like the the policy of the present president, he starts creating his own association. So sometimes you get so confused because the carriage was the same name. For me, the Philippines is always a paradox, you know. I mean, on the one hand, I'm, when I see people living on the street, that that makes me very sad. And and then yesterday, I was I was going to see a friend in uh, in Makati. You know, I only have one friend in Makati. Um, and and so, but I, I went into what was it Rustan Glorieta, where they had people were singing. You know, they had the pianos out and they're, they're on, uh, late in the evening, and that was just so wonderful. You know, I mean, and everybody, it, it was a huge audience. There must have been a thousand people watching. Uh, and I, this is the only place in the world, I think, where one can see that. 